In our latest podcast, we step back 40 years in time to an era when something special was happening in the Granite City. Alex McLeish and Gordon Strachan were part of the Aberdeen team led by a young manager named Alex Ferguson, who would go on to dominate in the 1980s, winning 10 trophies in seven years. Welcome to Curry Club, the Scottish Football Sessions. Alex, Gordon, great to see you. Great to have a chance to talk about what was an unbelievable decade in the history of, of Scottish football and a success story in the Granite City that you two were such a big part of. When you get the call, what, almost 40 years on now, and someone says, do you fancy a wee chat about this? Alex, do you still say, no problem at all, because it was momentous, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we, I think we, we remember almost everything leading up to the final and, you know, the, the mishaps and little injury things that, you know, I'd done my back in a week before doing some lifting of paving stones very stupidly. How did they know you hurt your back? I just thought you were playing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that accounted just, for the pass back. Oh, we'll get to that pass back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure we'll get to that. Do you remember the day then? Alex Ferguson was appointed this first day in the job, meeting him? Well, I, do, I do remember the impact it had in the, in the first team guys because uh, a lot of them were, were you know, having their little say, oh, the boss is comparing me to some players and I think I'm better than him, you know. I think that, so I was was always, he was always comparing to St Mun players, like, <laughs> and we are going, aye, all right. <laughs> this is were, very good, they, but yeah. try and make us a bit better Listen, than Tony Fitzpatrick and Billy Stark. The, the tremendous players at St Mun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard some of the first team yeah. moaning, you know, the, the, the older guys that you, you kind of listen to and inspired by, you know, and um, Sir Alex, was good enough to spot that hey, I need to make a wee change here and, and I approach it in a different way. And he did, and that's what he was great at. I think yeah, you've it, described it was, him before as a wounded animal. He's an angry man, I think. He was, he was permanently angry. And I think that was, I don't know, I agree, that was, his, that was his energy. Anger was his energy. And he had to, something, he, he had to have something that made him angry. And he, and he was a guy that could keep this anger going. Most of us would extinguish the anger after a month mm -hmm. or something like that. He could keep it going for maybe 20 years. <laughs> 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 so he had this anger that kept it, which is great. Yeah. yeah. It's fantastic. We all need that, this kind of whatever drive it is, and he's got that. Because everyone talks about, obviously, Sir Alex and yeah. what he did. I mean, I know Archie Knott, he left, I think, 1983, he eventually came back to the club. Mm -hmm. But how, how big was he for you guys, Archie, in that, those first few years, in the success story? Listen, Archie was magnificent, you know, brilliant organiser and with some brilliant put-down banter, mm -hmm. um, which mm -hmm. was was fantastic, Gordon, wasn't it? Yeah, well, he, he, as I said, it used to be good cup, bad cup. Usually you get a, a, as a good. manager, the manager <laughs> comes at you and the, the assistant comes and says, well, I didn't really mean that, son, this is what he meant, and you did all right. Well, actually, any sort of kind of self-respect you ever had after Alec had done, and you actually would rip it away for you, so you have no respect whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Bad cop, bad cop. Yeah, well, bad, bad cop, worse cop. <laughs> uh, and you go, oh, well, that's... Thank goodness. Actually, anything you say, I have. Oh, no, here we go again. And I'm left with nothing. You're, you're now the worst football player that's ever played the game, worst human being on the planet. Uh, and you'd have to come back from that. They used to argue with each other in front of us. Yeah? Seriously, though? Not, oh, seriously. Not for effect? No, 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 no. no. There was one night where they were arguing with their taxis, Antrac Frankfurt, and actually was just out his sight behind it, and he's pointing at this, that, and everything. Well, we need to do this in the second half. And Archie's shaking his head. And we're looking at Archie going, oh, what's he doing? And Archie's saying, and just so, so, so Alex has just caught me at the corner of his eye. <laughs> and he went, that's never got to work. Yeah. <laughs> How's it never got to work? So Archie had just joined us from uh, Forfa. Yeah. He'd been about two, two months to be Forfa. So he says, that's never got to work. And Fergie went, huh, when was the last time Forfa won you? <laughs> <laughs> and we're all about laughing. And Archie's like, oh, you're a big kid. You know? <laughs> so it was, it was, everything was, you know, everything was raw, the energy. And there's, there's no planet to this. When he gave you a bit of a doing, a verbal, <laughs> <laughs> Gordon will testify. The, the, the creative players get got it worse than the defenders. You know, <laughs> we, we've got to stop the ball going in the net and make tackles and put up a block, you know, but um, they've, they've got to create everything and they, they gave them a bit of battering. But, <laughs> you know, if, if he'd have got me, probably Willie, I could listen five, five, listen five times. Maybe twice. Nah, <laughs> in, in, in a career. But he would have a go, and, and it made me say, say to myself, I'll get there and show him. Yeah. 
you know, I'll, I'll show them, you know. And, and that was the kind of attitude we had in that squad and, and, and those players. There were some players that maybe couldn't handle it and they, they didn't make the end game. Your true character comes out in the football world, you know, on, on the pitch. Yeah. Right there. There's nobody looking after you then. OK, there's teammates, but basically you're on your own. Sir Alex and that, you bring out the worst in you as a person. The best out of you, what, the, what your crowd are wanting, what the supporters are wanting, what your teammates are wanting. But sometimes you go, really? What am I doing here? You know? So it brings out the worst of you at times and embarrass, you embarrass yourself. But it's like anything, fans are only interested in winning games of football. And it, it was um, absolutely a winner, wasn't it? You know, well, I mean, that. Oh no, listen, that's, that's, we know that. He used to play cards with us and things like that. And he cheated <laughs> cards. <laughs> He, he, we had a, 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 we had a snooker competition. <laughs> a snooker competition. This is serious, right? So he thinks he's great at snooker. Well, he wasn't bad. He wasn't bad, though. He wasn't bad. He played McDougall. So, he used to play McDougall and um, they, they had great battles together. Yeah, so had this thing where um, Joe Smith beat him in the tournament. Joe Smith got transferred to Motherwell a month later, so he put himself back in the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> he got beat with Ian Fleming. Guess what? He got transferred as well. No way. That's why I'm not suggesting they're out because they've beaten him. No, but, yes, he just, but, he, but he put himself back in. <laughs> yes. He asked me and Gordon for a game the next week and we said, <laughs> no, no, no you're all right, boss. <laughs> just that 82-83 season, because a lot of people automatically talk about Gothenburg yeah. and beating Real Madrid, and I will, I promise, but the quarter final, Bayern Munich. Yeah. And what an epic quarter that was. Well, you scored a big goal, didn't you, to get them back in the tie? Just off the charts, we... We practised a free kick that um, we kind of dissed it a wee bit in training, Gordon, didn't mm. we? And Gordon and John McMaster were the architects. I was watching this in my preparation. It was a brilliant yeah. old routine, they running were, into yeah. each other, pretending. Yeah. The architects yeah. of the movement, and we all reacted to that movement, and uh, the Germans were caught flat because they're, they're saying, ah, they have messed it up, you know, and, and uh, thankfully it went in the net, and then a minute later we're, we're winning the game. It was just quite incredible. Um, John scenes. Hewitt, wasn't it? Got the winner that John, decided the tie in the end, I think. John Hewitt got a winner, you know, barely 30... I think they were, the camera was still focusing on me yeah. when the, the ball went forward, Gordon, yeah, didn't I, it? You I, know, when John... I, but then finally they got John just at the end, yeah. not making a goalkeeper. That's right. I think uh, the, the uh, your goal, actually, it created the second goal. I think the camera were picking up arguments yeah. here, there and everywhere. And the, the next thing you see a ball getting in and, and somebody... And then John going in and... The rebound. And hit the back. So I think you got two two goals from one move there, really. You know, I mean, you look back and you look back and sometimes when you're sitting there you know, at night, and you think, what happens if I didn't have crossed that? What happens if Big Alec doesn't get there? <laughs> you know, life completely changes. Sliding doors, isn't it? Life there completely be a changes. Anniversary coming next season be for, here. For, well, just now. we might be talking about all the rest of the success, but we wouldn't be talking about Gothenburg. But I think a lot of the fans still say that night at Petodre. Might be the, the greatest night ever there, that quarter final. That would be hard to beat, yeah, that night. I, I think it's, well, I believe it's, it's the best night ever at Petrodri. Just but even before we started this little chat today, a sense of pride I got from you when I mentioned Gothenburg, Real Madrid. was the first thing you said? We're the last team to beat Real Madrid in a European final. Yeah. It's fact. Yeah. Incredible stat. And, yeah, I mean, I did give you that stat when I came in. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I had it uh, written down, but the sense of pride that you had way. when you said it, Lizzie, yeah. get you to read this after. No, fantastic. Mm. What do you remember from the night of the final? You had a few moments, well, didn't you, in the game? Uh, oops. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I do remember the, the pouring rain got me, right? Lashing um, so lashing down. And it, when, when I was warming up, you know, doing some passing, and I, the ball was sticking. Yeah. And one of the last things I said, because I, I normally stay out uh, more, you know, longer than everybody else doing my warm up, and I, I went back in and I said to the guys, listen, guys, see if you're passing the ball, you've really got to chip it a wee bit because it's going to stick in the water. <laughs> what did you do? Sell the goalie shot? <laughs> famous, la famous last words. You know, I get a, 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 in a situation where 99 times out of 100, it's an easy ball back to Jim Layton. Uh, in those days, we could pick it up, but um, I didn't do what I said they should do. But uh, it stuck in the water, and um, when he when he told it, we knew him. Yeah. And, or Santiana and um, Jim brought him down. Mm -hmm. And it, anyway, I had an, had an assist to make up for things, but but um, that was another. The what, gaffer was waiting kick. for me at half time. That was another what corner kick, you know. Yeah. 
It's through through football. Just for the winner, the John Hewitt winner. No, no. Or is this the first goal? The first goal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was made because people used to, and I think you can still do it today because the centre half's getting a bit early. Yeah. And they get marked and shoved. So we, we Alec just, if you watch Alec, he stays right at it to the last minute. Okay. And then he has a run at it. Yeah. So I know, I know where to put it. Yeah. And we practice that as well. So it's amazing for all the, 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 the wonderful football you talk about that set plays like they have been forever. Yeah. yeah. I will no change if you get that right. And, and from that set play, you get back to equalising and then playing really well after that. Yeah. And then the rest is history. John Hewitt scores the winner. Those celebrations in the city. I mean, you must remember the night, like it's yesterday, and, and the reception as well you got after it. Well, I mean, I'll never, ever forget it, you know. It's it's just um, you know to, to see the fans when we get back to Aberdeen as well. But on that particular night, and I think you said to me last a couple of years ago, Gordon, that you you watched the game for the first time ever. I watched it. I the watched full thing. The yeah, full thing. Alec, Alec was a manager, Aston Villa. Yeah, and uh, I was in my house in Southampton, and Leslie wasn't speaking to me, <laughs> so I had nothing to do. It was a New Year's Day again. Again, you're you're right. So. Um, so I thought, I watched this. I've never watched it before. So I watched that. And after that, I phoned Big Alec, it was about 12 o'clock. I said, listen, I've just watched this game. We were far better than I thought we were. <laughs> I, honestly. We battered them. And I, I, yeah. j just as a team. Yeah. I just thought, in that days, because I never took in too much that we were a high tempo, it was Alex, a high tempo team who could wear teams down. Mm. But there's a lot more to us than that, you know. There really was. Well, think about the winning goal. It's a great oh, move, listen. isn't it? Yeah, but great ball in too. And, and and I'm not very good at remembering things during the games. I don't know how Alec is. And I watched it, and I've had a shot. And the goal is bold. If you said to me I had a shot during that game, I was nah, wasn't it me? Mm. This was amazing. But I just realised that during that you know, that that January day, I thought big Alec. I said, listen, I've just watched this. I mean, I remember Alec saying, well, if I had a couple of players a day, I'd be all right. Sure. And I went, yeah. And I, I was really proud of the team. And the way I went about their job and how brave they were on the ball. Because I used to think, well, well, it's strong, brave. No, there's far more to it than that, you know. When it's happening, you don't realise what you're doing. You don't realise what's actually happening. It's only when you step back for it. I literally laughed every day I was there. You, of course, both went on to management, but very pinnacle, the top, managing your country as well. Is that what you were always trying to recreate? How do you give them a taste of what you've had? Because mm. it's great. Yeah. I can if, if, if you get a bit of these memories that I've had, that would be great. And I can stand back and watch you enjoying it. It's the same when you go to Celtic or Scotland. You want to be a small part in, in creating something special. Mm. What kind of business do you go in? Every day you end up laughing. Mm. Every day. Yeah because some, it doesn't matter what's happening around the, that's the environment you work in. You've got energy to burn as a manager, you know, and as Gordon says, make, making players, imposing your personality on, on the, the team mm -hmm. and the squad, and indeed, everybody that works at the club, you know, I think, well, Alec Ferguson was, was brilliant at that. Good with everybody. And, and I took that on, as, on board as well, when you know, I went to my clubs, tried to make the staff part of it as well. That's part of Sir Alex's psychology. He's, he's, yeah. he's the best Is that the biggest thing we, you took on to sports, try and emulate? He's, he's the best sports psychologist in the world. You know, you get people saying they're sports psychologists. Yeah, I'm okay with it one for one, but I'm not so sure as a group and all that. Because the manager, his body language, every moment of the day, players watch you every moment of the day, especially when you come after that defeat or a draw, a bad draw, they're watching you coming in. It's, it's not the Churchillian speeches. People think it's that. Yeah. It's when you're, you're having a bad day and, and it, Sir Alex will walk in that tunnel used to go, Glad you were playing the day, son. And that, that's all you need. A couple of words now and then. It's not, as I say, it's not the church. Yeah. There's the other side to it. You know, he'd turn up your door and say if you're all right, your missus all right, all that, all that kind of stuff. His, his thing was never let your teammates down and never let your family down. That would be his big thing. You know, when, when he yeah. went for you, it was usually because you're letting your teammates down yeah. or letting your family down. Or, or he knew you could do better. Well, he, he'd work on that. So he, you'd say to yourself, well, I'm not just letting myself down here because sometimes you get a bit... He gets selfish and insecure. Oh, I'm playing badly, and people thought that, oh, that's not a problem. The problem is here, you're letting your teammates down, yeah. and you're embarrassing your family who have turned up to watch you or anybody that knows you. That was the kind of psychology, and it works, you know. Yeah. So, 83 84 season, you've won the Super Cup, but you also complete the first double 
that anyone had done, I believe, in Scottish football outside of the old firm. So you just kept on going that season. I think you won seven points clear. I think you were in the league. Well, that 84 Scottish Cup final, which was, by the way, the third in a row in the Scottish yeah. Cup as well. No one had done that before. Mark McGee scored, didn't he, that game, the winner against Celtic, I think, and that was Mark's last game for the club mm -hmm. and your last game as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the interest had come at that point. And how, yeah, well, how did Alex take that? The funny thing about it was the, the, the this was at the, the, the start of the, the kind of contract was up, you could leave. Yeah. But it wasn't like a boss, man. You still no. had to pay a kind of certain amount, but it's very little money as such. And there was a kind of friction between, I think at the time, Alex had never had anybody leaving him. Yeah. And I was the first to put my head up and say, listen, I'm going to leave at the end of the season, which didn't go down too well, to be honest with you. What, what happened? What did he say? Well, he didn't speak, really. Right. Uh, and any time he did, it was kind of, uh, if I had to buy and do you think anybody will sign you? And I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> no chance for that. <laughs> so it become uh, loggerheads, yeah. you know, um, and he was sending me the most ridiculous player of the year dues. You know, where's the furthest one away? Strachan, you're going with your wife away up there. Right, okay, then I'm away up there. It's gone through snow and everything. You get a player of the year. So, right, that's it, you're up there. Ah, okay, right. So it was, it was, it was kind of tense. Yeah. But You were brave to do that though, weren't you? Because not only just leaving him, but leaving the team, all these personalities you said. But the funny thing about it, but the funny thing, all the guys were great. Yeah. They, none of them were going, oh, isn't it? They're all going, ah, come on, that's that's great. Well, 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 you know, and, but, you know. Um, Did you fall out with a, with Sir Alex? Well, we just went silent and, you know, it was a, a kind of undercurrent of, why are you leaving me type of thing? And I'm going, well, I need to make some money yeah. <laughs> um, because I'm getting on and, and there's no savings. You think, well, what's going to happen? So, when, when did you start talking to him again? Well, it, 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 after, just after I signed for Man United, right. because the funny thing, if you look at it, he comes to Man United with yeah. me to sign, yeah. which is very unusual as a manager taking me down to sign. When uh, when I was at Man United, uh, he, he phoned me every now and then, how's right. it going, what's it like? I said, well, the boys do do a bit of drinking here. <laughs> now, not thinking he was going to turn up, yeah. you know, and, and, <laughs> and people in the future thought, oh, he was telling us what, I didn't think about it, yeah. you know. The boys drink, oh, they're brilliant at drinking, absolutely fantastic at drinking. Never seen anything like it in your life. It's interesting you just said about, you know, the boys were good at drinking. Because yeah. I think later on in, in Alex Ferguson's managerial career, as he was then, you hear the stories of him going round to, to houses and finding out that some boys were at parties and mm. the kids track them out. Was he like that at Aberdeen? Absolutely. Yeah. It was always the same. Absolutely. He used to get youth team players like Brian Gunn and Eric Black that were babysitting on a Saturday night for the likes of me. <laughs> Seriously, I'd bang gun with my babysitter. <laughs> like, seriously. Yeah. And what he did is make sure they never went out. Yeah. So he made sure the kids were always on a Saturday night, but babysitting for mm -hmm. me or Mark or Wally. And so they babysit. And then on the Monday, the, boy, the, the, the kids like Cooper and all that would go on. They say, we were striking. <laughs> what time to strike and get on Saturday night? Was it with McGee? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's with McGee. <laughs> what were they eating? Curries. Curries. <laughs> I was eating curries. <laughs> so he killed two birds with one stone. Yeah, these kids. And yeah. I mean, he had them petrified, yeah. but he, he made sure that there was a tracking device on us when we come home and all the rest of it. I mean, it's full control, but again, it worked. But just going back to, to the end of that season, right, the 84, you've won the cup again. And you probably knew at this point, but some players did start to leave that dressing room. Yeah. There was interest in Alex himself as well. Mm -hmm. As you know, he started to get offers. How did you feel still in that? Did you have no doubt the success story would continue? Or did you start to worry yourself? Did you start to look elsewhere? I'd, I'd had a couple of um, phone calls that you know, one or two teams in England, and, and I spoke to Gordon about this way back in the day, and I was going to walk out with him, and, <laughs> and I bottled it in the end. Did you? I, yeah. So you could have gone the end of that season? <laughs> well, one of the English clubs um, made a call, said... It wasn't it Tottenham, was it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was... Um, it was Tottenham. Yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, I need to go and have a meeting with him. And he says, Ali, I want you in here, get this contract sorted, because <laughs> I'm going my holidays on Monday. I want it sorted before I, I go away. I says, yeah, for listen, you know, go on your holiday and I'll, well, you know, I was trying to kind of engineer other things. And uh, he says, no, come doing it tomorrow. I want to see you tomorrow and then we'll get it sorted. Mm. So I go down and Instead of going in and saying, um, I, I want to go. And um, I said to him, 
I don't think you're paying us enough money, boss. <laughs> yeah. And he says, <sighs> you and Willie Muller are bleeding this club dry. <laughs> and he says, I'll give you another tenner. <laughs> and somehow I took his hand. <laughs> you dared not. <laughs> so I took his hand in it, and, and it was another three-year deal. Well, yeah. Anyway, listen, yeah. my, 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 ah, career, no, my, listen. Car my, my career hasn't been too sharp. No, no, listen, you since, went on. Since, so you never know, the sliding doors. Yeah. Yeah. You went on to more success. <laughs> but, but, He's I, like that. Yeah. Well, but, but listen, when he, when, he hear, when he sees this, he'll probably find me again. You know, so. <laughs> he'll, he'll be on the phone, people. <laughs> I'm just laughing at some of the things. Because you go in there, right? And nobody's going, ah, you get in there because you're caught in there. You tell them what you want. I all right. <laughs> and I remember Jim Layton somehow managed to get a free transfer. The, um, <laughs> <laughs> the Ian Taggart forgot to send, you had to get a retaining letter at the oh, end of the season. One, yeah. So Jimmy never got one. So Jimmy's now, yeah. top of his game, yeah. he is now free to move to any club in Britain. So we're in the dressing room, Jimmy, I've not got, and Stuart Kennedy, like, oh, shit, beauty, you know, get yourself right <laughs> in there. You can ask for anything. Yeah. You sure, pff, you've got your free contract, you can go to Man United, you've got Spurs, yeah. you can go to you name it, you're the best keeper in Britain at the moment, you get in there and ask for, right, you know what Jimmy's like? So Jimmy's went in and we all go, going on you go, so we're all hanging about. <laughs> so he's, Jimmy's come back with that hound dog look. We were, he must be getting thousand pounds a week because we're only 200 grand or 200 pounds a week yeah. or 250. So he must have got a bit of <laughs> How did you get on, Jimmy? He went, I got a tax free loan. No, he <laughs> signed for the same money and got a tax free loan. Well done, Jim. <laughs> You'd better find that, that old hand come out again. That's oh, why the handshake. That's you'd, fine. You better take yeah. it. They were, they were, they were, a, they were a kind of, kind of feature in those days, weren't they? The tax I got free a tax free loan. Oh, well done. Built on loyalty. Well, I was going to say, but before that, before that, that's obviously a bit further down the line. Yeah. But at that time, so much must have been built on loyalty. I mean, he, he, he got close to people's families as well. I mean, he always asked to be a family, so he felt they were, you are, you are my boys, and uh, I don't like. You, Leaving the nest. Is there there's still chats among you, isn't there? Is there a WhatsApp group these days? Is that is that yeah, what's happened now? There, there's a, a Gothenburg group chat, yeah. And what a lads. Well, it should all. be ramping up now, by the way, ahead of the big anniversary. It will, yeah, yeah. But it's uh, 40 years next next year. And um, I, I don't think we can wait to 50 before we have a celebration. <laughs> what a time in your life. I think we're in the back nine now. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it, it, just incredible. And to think. Um, as, as Willie Miller used to say, a wee diddy team for a provincial <laughs> city um, won the, the European Cup Winners' Cup against the mighty Real Madrid. When it's happening, you don't realise what you're doing. You don't realise what, what's actually happening. It's only when you step back for it. I, I literally laughed every day I was there. I've no idea where my medals are. I have no idea where my strips are. I've absolutely no idea. But if you ask me to tell stories about the players and what happened in that dress, I've got all them. They're my, you can't buy that. You know, a selfie can't help you with that one. Yeah. Unforgettable. Amazing stories. Guys, thank you very much. Absolute Great. pleasure. Great. Thank, thank you. Talk about it, yeah. Thank you. BT Sport Pods.